On today's brand new super special investigative video into Idaho 4, we are going to discuss Brian Koberger, the investigation, the chief of police, and one small YouTube channel being the FBI. Oh my God. Yeah. Now, without further ado, let's see what I have to say for myself this time. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Crime Circus. My name is Drip Drop, and I'll be your host as always. I know you missed me, and you know that I missed you. Some of you wonder where I've been. Well, I've been right here. I've been right here at Crime Circus and the Crime Circus Cult investigating Innocent Lives Matter. That's my brand new series, because I talk about the cases that others won't. There's a lot of innocent people in prison and a lot more that are going to go to prison. And some of you watching this might even end up in prison, even if you didn't do it, because that's the prison planet that you were born into. Yeah. yeah, it's true. Franklin Tyrone Tucker from Key West, Florida. He's an innocent man, and that's episode one of Innocent Lives Matter. And Mackenzie Sharilla from Strongsville, Ohio. That's episode two in Innocent Lives Matter. She's a young, innocent woman, and she's in prison right now. And if some of you out there don't behave, you might be in prison too. And you know that's true. Boom. I'm here. I've always been here. Make sure you check out my recent uploads. I'm going to leave links down below. If you enjoy Crime Circus, Baby Drip, and Drip Drop, you're in the right place. And if you don't enjoy this show, what are you doing here? I'd love to hear from you. Comment down below. I know some of you are very curious about what I said in the intro about a smaller channel being the FBI. Yeah, it's true. So you have to be super careful about who you trust and who you give your hard-earned money to in this investigative world that we're in. Yeah. Not everybody has your best interest in mind, and some of them just want to drain you. Regardless if they say Brain Koberger's innocent, they're actually two-timing you with a double face. Jekyll and Hyde style. They pretend they're on your side as they feed you disinfo. Disinfo. This is real, and this is real serious. I've launched a deep dive investigation behind the scenes that should scare all of us. But I just won't stop. I can't. Innocent people need me. And we don't know if Brian Koberger's innocent, but he might be. What we've seen in this investigation is sus. All of it. And if you're watching this right now, you know. It's sus to us, which means it's sus to me and it's sus to you. True. So moving right along, let's jump right into the chief of police. He's retiring this year really soon. And the biggest case of his career doesn't even have a conviction yet. Yeah, check out this news article that a wonderful subscriber sent to me. Chief James Fry to retire after nearly 30 years with Moscow police. Okay, do I have your attention now? This is breaking news. Moscow Police Chief James Fry announced he will retire from the Moscow Police Department in May after nearly 30 years working up the ranks in the department. So why is he dipping out before the 30-year anniversary? Don't you think he could just stay around a little longer and make it to the full 3-0? Let's proceed. He started as a reserve officer in 1993 was hired as a patrol officer in 1995, held at the ranks of patrol corporal, patrol, and detective sergeant, services and detectives unit lieutenant, campus division captain, and served the past eight years as the chief of police. Thank you for serving, Chief Fry. This man is very accomplished. He's done a lot with the police force, but they did not mention his FBI training. Why did they seem to glance right over the most prestigious ward a police chief can receive. The little yellow brick, as seen in this police interview right here. And some of you may or may not recall, that's where a prayer card was, and then the prayer card went missing, and then it returned. This is a quote from Chief Fry. It has been my honor to serve and protect the citizens of Moscow and to contribute to the law enforcement profession throughout my career. The Moscow Police Department has embodied the ethos that to whom much is given, and we understand the trust that is placed in our officers in serving their community. I am confident that the culture, leadership, and personnel that we have developed within the Moscow Police Department will continue, and the department will remain the excellent example of professional law enforcement that it is today. That's what Chief Fry said. 
And that's alarming because we've seen how the Moscow Police Department interacts with its citizens. We all saw three young men that were not intoxicated and were not in possession of alcohol. However, they were cited for minors intoxicated, and they each had to pay $500 just for crossing the road on that fateful Saturday morning. Yeah. And we saw them looking for the staircase in the back of 1122 King Road. Huh. No stairs to the back deck. Interesting. No stairs to the back deck. Interesting. And we saw the chief driving a U-Haul truck removing belongings to help the families heal. We also saw them destroying private property at 1122 King Road. I believe it was a bag of Trulies, and it was truly disgusting to watch that unfold. And you know that's true. We also saw Moscow PD give a YouTuber a speeding ticket for going 9 miles per hour over the speed limit. But he skated on the potential alleged first degree passing away charges each and every single time he flew through a stop sign without stopping. He could have passed away me, you, a single mother, a young child, or just a poor, innocent college student. And enough college students have passed away in Moscow. R.I.P. Ethan, Zana, Kaylee, and Maddie. Hopefully they're all in a much better place because the place that I see when I look around here, it's scary. Super scary. And we each need to do our own part to make this world a lot less scary. Don't you think it's a bit sus that this is the biggest case in the chief of police's entire career and he's checking out before there's even resolution? We need conclusion one way or the other. Why is he leaving? And why did the longest standing detective at Moscow PD retire just after this crime happened? We need to know. And we need to know right now. Why is everybody quitting and retiring? And what's the status of the Brady Giglio violation that we all know about? Something's wrong with this investigation. Something's really wrong. I mean, seriously, we just want truth and justice. We want answers. Seriously, we have to do this for our future at any cost necessary. Shout out to Baby Drip for filling in for me when I'm unable to. But you know, I'm still your host as always. Now let's continue this article. Let's see where we left off. In addition to his service to the Moscow community, Chief Fry was appointed by the Idaho governor to serve on the Idaho School Safety and Security Board in 2016, the Idaho Peace Officer Standards and Training Council in 2018, and the Idaho Opioid and Substance Use Disorder Advisory Group in 2019. Chief Fry has also served on the Idaho Police Chief's Accreditation Team as a guest lecturer for the University of Idaho's Justice Studies Program and on numerous community nonprofit boards and organizations. Oh my God. Oh my God is right. That is one heck of a resume. Let's proceed. Moscow Mayor Art Batej says, Chief Fry has served our community for nearly 29 years. I thought it was for nearly 30 years. And throughout it all, he has served as a shining example of professional community policing that is reflected throughout all aspects of Moscow Police Department. The community will be forever in debt for the steady and capable guidance for this department and the community through many challenging times. I wish him nothing but the best in this next chapter of his life. What in the world is the next chapter of his life? Maybe we don't want to know. Maybe we don't need to know. But he has been a huge part of this investigation of the Idaho Four and the investigation and the arrest of Brian Koberger. Keep in mind that this is all someone else's fantasy, but we certainly think it's really sus that you would dip out on such an important case. But really, what do we know? We're just multi-award winning here on YouTube. Yeah, we've launched some pretty good investigations. We've uploaded some pretty good interrogations. We have some content worth watching. We do our due diligence. You want a closer look? Check these out. You probably can't even see these because we're in the dark. I mean, seriously, think about it. What you're looking at right here, a lot of people envy. They envy it really, really bad. Enough to slander, defame, tell lies, and just try to shame you and me. But we won't stop. We can't stop. These cases are too important. Anyways, I'm going to put these words down because they are really heavy. 
something a lot of other alleged so-called creators, aka reactors, will never get to experience. Yeah. I do want to give you a heads up that I am working on some extremely long and important Idaho 4 videos. They're going to blow your mind because my investigation goes deeper than you could ever imagine. Here at Crime Circus, we're not the type of channel that will put out useless content every single day to get your view, your click, and waste your time and beg for your money. No, this investigation is real and it's real serious and it's real important. Seriously, seriously. You want booms? You're in the right place. But you can't get a boom every single day. I don't want to see you get hurt or injured. And I'm an empath, so that would hurt me extra worse than it even hurts you. I feel your pain and I feel your struggles and all I want to do is put peace, love, and positivity in this world. No negativity here at Crime Circus. That's not tolerated and that's not allowed. I manifested this entire circus. And it is an electrifying circus that I'm so glad you're part of. I'm so glad you're here watching this video. And if you're feeling down, hopefully somebody gives you a hug really soon. Sometimes a hug can do wonders and make you feel really good. And if you were right here with me, I'd give you the biggest, best hug of your entire life. And you could even be invited over for a slumber party at Crime Circus headquarters. No bullying, no trolls, no negativity. We don't tolerate it and we don't have time for it. These investigations are too serious. And you know that's true. You want more booms? I've got more booms coming. You're going to have to stay subscribed. You're going to have to leave a comment. You're going to have to smash the thumbs up button. If you want to support me, you can become a member or a Patreon. Look for the links down below. And you know you can find me inside of the Cash app if you want to. But do yourselves a favor. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Because some of these smaller channels that you support and consider supporting will put the K-Bar knife deep into your back faster than you could see me blink. Yeah, really fast. Sometimes you gotta go with your gut feeling when you feel like people are acting strange around you. You have to be super careful in this world. You don't wanna end up like Richard Allen in Delphi, Indiana, wrongfully accused, arrested, and charged, and possibly soon to be convicted of passing away Abby and Libby. You don't want that to happen. You don't, you don't. Richard Allen was a pharmacy technician, and now he's just an inmate getting abused by the cult of Odin. And prison abuse is wrong. Some of you out there think it's funny, and you're super deranged and super disturbed. Anyways, I'm so glad you watched this episode. I'm so glad you're here. Check out my merch shop if you want a cool t-shirt or something else, etc. And until next time, remember to stay safe out there because you know it's a dangerous world.